Thank you, everyone. We will formally reconvene with ISO 3.1 update. Thank you to Lorna and Kipson. Um, can I get a mover and a second of these? I'll move. The motion, Rico and Delhi. Thank you. And those in favour? Well, just for the moving. But that's all that's all we're doing. Okay. It's received in the report. Okay, so I'll invite uh, the board to So this this report was just to update you on what's been happening with the major event fund um, of late. Obviously we get the COVID, so there's been very little activity. Um we Funded a resource concept for the Tennis Race Course to allow it to hold events there. Um, and due to COVID, there has been none. Uh, but, but hopefully, next week we should be able to bring something there. I'm working with a number of um, event organisers and promoters to try and secure something for the Tennis Race Course, which is we all hope that we can venue. Um, and we also gave a grant of $4,000. To the Mercury Bay Rugby Club, um, when they, they were hosted to have a rugby game. Um, it was really successful for wow. our whole district. Usually, those games have not been held, um, and our district have been held in, in Hawaii. So, it was, I think, the first time that um, one's been hosted. Um, and it got lots and lots of coverage on TV, and it's looking really positive that, you know, not just Mercury Bay, but um, Tens Valley Bay Virginia and we'll look at our district going forward for um, some bigger uh, rugby games, should we get them. So, so that's been really successful. Um, there is a bit of an update in here on events, sort of what's happening this summer. I did speak to you at your um, induction day in Whangmatar about events, but we, we did have listed here an event at Buffalo Beach Reserve that is now being um, postponed next year, and we're just moving the event to the Caribbean Tavern uh, for this summer. The Matarini one is still going ahead um, on the 7th of January, and we have the Greenstone Summer Concert in February and Beach Break in Whangamataa on the 28th of January. Um, which is Ocean Alley and Shape Shifter. Um, yeah, so both of those um, last two events will be quite big for the district, I think, for Tianga. Um, we'll be looking at around about 10,000 people. Numbers are ticket sales and very slow um, post COVID. And for from the town, they're hoping to get around 6,000. Sorry, Kirsten, for the young age, you're talking about the summer concert? Yes. Yeah, on Waiting Me Weekend. Then that's an old mm -hmm. venue, isn't it? It comes to the Angle Waterways yeah, um, site. No, I did go out to the Sheriff Block actually yesterday afternoon to have a look at what's happening out there. And, um, yeah, yeah it's, pretty, it's pretty weird. But uh, they have removed quite a bit of the old trees that were there, and it looks like there's um, some work is starting to happen out there, which is great to see. So I think it's good to have that on our uh, new site. Um, there's, a, there's a little um, section in the report also which talks about the regional events fund, which is the fund that was given to the National Coronadal from MB, which helped events um, get back on their feet post COVID. Uh, this last run, of funds in 2022 um, was for the Fidianga and Tango Mata Marathons. They were successful in their applications. Um, there's one more round of funding, and that, that is for next year. So if you know the people looking to post events in our district, I encourage them to apply for that when that funding round comes up, which is usually around about June, July time, just before our community grants. Um, does that look like to be a district fund event or just a local event? Yeah. Local, local event is fine, but there is um, a criteria around that. And it's more about um, getting thumbs on seats, really, getting encouraging people to come to the district. 
It was a three year fund um, for next year's the last one. Um, putting a bit of a tense hat on, um, very disappointed that we missed out on Guns N' Roses. Um, yeah. So is Robin. Yeah, Robin as well. Um, how well connected are we with the kind of the tier two, tier three promoters in Auckland? I mean, no. because we're so close to Toronga, Haronga, Hamilton, Auckland. Sort of thing. Um, I think we've kind of connected enough to pick up the phone and speak to them. Um, and they, the problem is they want to go to the summer hotspots. So they want to go to Kaimata because there's a captured audience, and they want to go to Pushyanga because there's a captured audience of all the holiday makers. So encouraging them to come to teams is difficult. Um, but but something like Freddie's drop, we kind of we kind of um, proved that it works. But there was fifteen hundred people. So yes, it did work, and yes, it was great, and yes, the venue was awesome. I, I, I love the venue, um, and you know I'm positive that we can get something in there and, and have a good go of it. But there was only 1,500 people, so for the promoter, it wouldn't okay. have been much. Um, yep, I agree. Return. Mm. Yeah, I just wanted to raise a quick one for the chair. Uh, the Fong Matau uh, run walk, which sees uh, got some funding for the year. One of their biggest issues is traffic management. Is there any money in that fund to help them with that or any way to work through that problem? They can apply to that um, fund, and they did apply to that fund, um, and they, they can include that in their application right. or traffic management costs. But mm -hmm. it, is, it's it, a, it is a big cost. Yeah. 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 And really all those miracles, the costs are huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, you know, so I, there's a separate fund to apply to get that Extra traffic management, is it? It's not extra traffic management. No, they could apply to the um, fund right. for costs for their event the and include that as part of their application. Okay. I just um, wanted to congratulate really the Mercury Bay Rugby Club. I mean, they had to pivot at really last minute because our fields at, at um, Mercury Bay Sports Park weren't um, fit for purpose for them to play such a game. And they really pivoted. They came to the board. They asked for some money. I know they got some support um, from your events fund as well. But I went. My two sons were ball boys on the day, and it was it was amazing. Yeah. Mercury okay. Bay turned on some fabulous weather. It's great fundraising opportunity for for um, some of our other local clubs, and it was great. I know we were just talking about the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to. You know, say thanks, and and also just mention the great work they did because it, they really pivoted at the last minute to make that happen. Yeah, I think they had two weeks to pull that off. So that, you know, amazing. That's through really cheer. Just uh, I support everything that was said. It was a terrific day for uh, Big Green Bay. Um, the Ocean Festival for next year is that uh... so. So I've got a meeting on Friday morning because it's the only people around. Well. So um, and it's just, uh, it's a meeting on site. So I'll know more after Friday morning what what's happening with that going forward and how that will look going forward. But at this stage, um, it's just an initial meeting. So I'll know more after that. Um, Sorry, through the chair. Um, why did they have to move the Rocking Horse Festival? Um, they uh, they were quite late for their application for um, their liquor licensing, and so it was going to go to the hearing, and we, the hearing would have been this week, and so we could look at monitoring the state tickets. Um, so they decided to hold it this year at the Croquet, which they did last year, and it was successful, and then it them a longer period of time to apply for all their licensing requirements and get them in earlier. Thank you. Was there not an issue with the staging as well? No. It wasn't it wasn't um it was they, uh, the original building consent they applied for was a stage that we wouldn't be able to house here, but they they came up, uh, they changed their plans and got a new stage and um yeah, it's, it's good. Can I just um and I don't know if you're in a position to answer this, the um Thames rugby club. Facilities with 
only urinals and no toilets suitable for women to use? Is that an issue? Is that holding them back in terms of availability for events at teams or not? Oh, that, that would be, uh, I guess, a part of the reserves query. I'm, I'm not for really sure, but we can think of a um, 24 hour walk there recently um, and they use the toilets at Brown's Park. I, I'm, I'm not too sure about the facility, but I think I mentioned it's not been waiting. I've not heard that before, no. That probably then Porter. Did you throw any line on that? More about. It was definitely mentioned though um, when we were there on our induction visit that it was preventing them being able to hold events and didn't meet the criteria I understood. So. I wonder if Avery and I can call on you to throw a bit of light on that. Thank you, Your Worship. You're absolutely correct. It's actually a 10 day rugby union. There's refusions on the other to have games there while to know sit down facilities as such and um, teams rugby sports and teams rugby and sports scholars we call are prepared to put toilets in there subject to the council room and approval and pay for them themselves at no cost to the council but they can't have teams participating with women in there without those toilets so it's a team very rugby union and a consequence to that that's why the game went to Mercury Bay and not and the team. So the Mercury Bay went in our loss and the community's lost to my head. Thank you. Although just for clarification, on the edge of the grounds just by the gate when you drive in there are mm. public toilets. That's what I thought. For men and yeah, animals. But, but within the grandstand, yes, Adrian's correct, there's only male toilets available in there. Thank you for that. Um, and the other point of clarification, the sports ground was, uh, was unusable. Some guys sprang the board who got the mix wrong and killed the entire grass area. It was a human error mistake. Oh. Um, that's why all the sports grounds in the game were used. So it was a good a win for the rugby club. And it went really well. We lost and lost probably Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? I'd like to put the vote, please. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Item is carried. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Thank you, Laura. Stick around. Oh, <laughs> um, can I just, before we move on, which we have, um, do we need to clarify? That direction in there that that rocking horse event is not being held at Buffalo Beach, it's been with the Coralie, or is that in my understanding? Christmas already mentioned it, so it's not. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's my um, Item 3.2, just for information, seeing this key performance indicators update. Can I get a move from the second to receive the motion, please? Terry and Martin, thank you. Okay, the motion is that uh, we received the Information Centre update, and I'll ask Lorna and Kirsten to speak to this as well. Yes. This report um, is the first time we've brought this to Council. Um, usually we post them in Civic Club and the agendas for each local area, um, so you can go in and have a look at um, the reports. There was a few uh, issues last year with some of the councils or community buildings being unable to open the attachments. So um, we, we thought it was because we're funding them, it would be um, appropriate for us to bring this to council. So this report is just an update to you. Um, they every every um, three months the information centres report to um, myself on. on uh, uh, the key uh, performance indicators and how they're, how they're tracking, how many particulars have been in, um, what hours they're opening, etc. So, this report is just to show you how they're going um, per area. Uh, the Thames kiosks um, are up and running. One of them is up and running, uh, one is damaged, and uh, a replacement is being 
uh, a, a replacement screen is being served to so I can get yeah. up and running. Um, and at this stage, we are unable to um, get any data out of them, but we are going to be working with the company that installed them to figure out how we can do that going forward. Um, the issue with that is they are, they are not our kiosks. They are owned by a private company, so uh, we need to figure out how we can do that going forward. Um, <clears throat> I, I have real concerns about the lack of eyesight capability in teams. Um, every bus that comes here stops at, 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 at teams outside the civic centre. People pour off it, people pour onto it, often go to other places in the peninsula, but they arrive here and there's absolutely nothing. Because what is happening in goldfields is, as you pointed out, there's, there's problems and so on. On an induction tour, we go across to Palanui, you know, the middle of where it was, you know, and you kind of think, wow, that's a happening thing. And there's a, a trust that sits behind it. It's got a governance team and, you know, and, the, and the whole shebang. And I think we need to do something, we need to be proactive about doing something about an effective eyesight here in Thames. Um, yep, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we're hitting it, we were hit over the head numerous times during the campaign about the eyesight. The business community here is, you know, just saying, why haven't we got it? And when I, when I see what's happening at Pawanui, I kind of think, is there an idea where you know, the governance structure and everything is all in place and they just kind of somehow replicate what's happening over there in Thames. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would just like for the whole the, the whole district really, but certainly for Thames, to, to see some really um, creative and aggressive thinking about improving what we have for, for Thames. And Can I just jump in there for a second, and, and I think Councillor Rebel, you not only raise excellent points, but you've really um, encapsulated the feeling around the council table and what we're hearing in the community. Um, what I'd like to suggest is that what we're looking at here is a, a quarterly report of KPIs. I would like to see this council um, direct staff to look at options for eyesight's and information centres across the district in preparation for the uh, annual plan or LTP, because I think this needs wider examination and particularly what's going on in terms of highlighted issues and concerns and lost opportunities. So um, whether we need an, an, an additional, so yeah, LTP, I think, um, whether we need an additional uh, amendment to this resolution or whether we do it separately, I'm not sure. Is it just a report? Which mm. is just, so this is really what I'm highlighting. This is a report, um, probably not the right um, format to get into the, the nuts and bolts, but it's absolutely a subject that we need to right. Well, the report highlights the possibility of what's happening. Yeah, and it and shines a light. If there needs to be a motion to say we need to do something, then I'm happy yeah. to move a motion. Maybe we need to do something. Um, two things. I noticed that the, the funding for TIMS is similar to other eyesights, where that there's an unmanned kiosk type situation. Um, this year, what's the background? Um, the funds. Um, so the background is we uh, went out to the community. Um, we are publicly looking for an operator to operate the team's information centre because um, destination crime had all moved out of that space once when the funding was reduced. So with, with the funding available, there was no, nobody wanted to do it. Gotcha. Um, and that's when the chaos uh, you know, came to us and um, Goldfields decided that they would put in a 
My other part of my song, my other part of my observation is, you know, I don't want to call Thames a gateway town because we want Thames to be a destination as well, oh, as I'm right. Um, and I'm very keen to see that happen. But um, and I'm not going to say sub-regional, but district. I feel there's a need for a district eyesight, which has a major focus on tens, but also has the ability, just like if you're in Tekapo or wherever you can book stuff for Queenstown and blah, blah, blah. So maybe there is a district contribution towards this mega eyesight, which is, is, is all over all of the activities and accommodation throughout the the district, because we do seem to continue on a theme of us and them and puddling around in our own little wards. And I think there's a huge opportunity, I'd like to agree with, um, endorse what Councillor Rebel said, that there's an opportunity here. I hear that you couldn't get anyone to, to run one, but maybe there is a, you know, there's an opportunity to have, not a sub-regional, but So I'll go Councillor Rodley first. And yes, I support uh, what Peter said earlier on, and to me, the it, it comes down to a matter of um, inequity. I mean, I look at these figures here, and I'm not picking on any particular town, but Coromandel gets 50, Pawanui gets 32. Um, what's that based on? Lots of the figures in here, we don't have figures for a number of these about how many people have gone through. And also, it, it seems to me that the Thames Eyesight Information Centre, the ability to have something that was manned failed because we couldn't find either a community organisation or a business to run it. And the fact that that just seems really unfair that that fact alone meant we've got what we've currently got. Whereas if you've got other organisations that might have an older population, there's more potential for um, a volunteer group to be able to do it. It, it. It's just, it's not equal around the peninsula. We have a whole lot of different places around the peninsula that attract different people. But the whole information centre and eyesight has changed so dramatically because there's virtually no income that they derive from doing bookings for buses. Um, so many people book online, they've got their itinerary planned out, but they might still like to pop into somewhere to grab a map or whatever. Plus there's locals who like to use it for um, sorry, you know, whatever purpose. I'm sorry, so, can I so yes, I would just endorse that we need to consider it as can Peter I suggested. That we probably don't want to too deep into this because it needs to be moved to a as, as a resolution and we will ask staff to come back to us with a report and then we can have a session specifically on this because I think that this is a quarterly KPI report it's highlighted some issues that we need to receive the report um, and move on so that we can ask for that report again. Just one quick question sure. uh, for you Donna. How do we find those information things? Can you just refresh my memory where the funding comes from for each ward? Just that's, that's 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 the different funds. The total district fund. Thank you. Can I ask my question now? Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No trouble. Um, so just in attachment A, there's year one relate to year one of the um, long term plan, and year two, year two. Okay, so that's increased. Right? Thank you. That's. This is what we are going to spend, not what we have spent. Thank you, Councillor Sinclair. So what I would like to suggest um, is that we look at an additional resolution. Um, Councillor Rebel, are you happy to propose that? Absolutely. Whatever it is, I'm proposing. <laughs> you can stand up as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the wording would be along the lines of uh, Council direct staff to look at options for the district um, eyesight and information centre service delivery um, and funding, and funding uh, in preparation for the LTP discussions. Yep. And Jenny, I'll take it. 
So do we call that information centres rather than eyesights? Because there is a yeah, no you know, there is a difference. So eyesight has to be nationally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any suggested? Sorry, Warren. No, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, just one other thing I was going to mention is um, we're well aware with the information centres, they don't just provide information to visitors, it's more about information as well to locals and, and support services. So I've just also, when we bring up Kate, I had a discussion, it's sort of if you're looking at that future for local government about you know, what the, um, what the services can be done in our communities and how these sorts of um, centres, yeah. information centres maybe um, have other uses as well. Absolutely. Yes, and I encourage a wider scope to, to incorporate a, you know, a, an overview of, of those that have got business associations and their involvement because there's a direct connection between them as well. Um, so do we have some more for that? Yes, Fair enough. Right. Thank you. But I suggest the wording as finely as possible, but we'll pick up a little of this to that there, just to keep the stuff away. But I think Lauren's right. I think the, in the future, these things will only be fine as long as the use is attached to them, yeah. whatever those are. Thank you. So the, the resolution directs the chief executive to the options for the district information centre, centre service delivery. And funding in preparation for the long term plans and discussions. Uh, the motion is proposed by Councillor Rebel. Could I get a second for this? Councillor Walker. All those in favour? Aye. 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 All those against? Motion is carried. Thank, Thank you so very nice. much. And we look forward to the Oh, no. Sorry, it's not in team. No. <laughs> Temporary alcohol ban. Item 3.3, can I move to a second? I'll move. And Billy. Um, so, um, well, we'll take the report as read, but I'll. Yeah, so this report um, is to in place, put in place um, temporary alcohol holdings while we have events. Um, and you'll see these reports um, for the new councillors. These will always come up around the Taste of Mount Rangi and Beach Hop or any other time there is an event in a town where the um, peak period blanket hit liquor ban um, in the place. So this report is asking for a temporary alcohol ban for the Taste of Mount Rangi in 2023 and the Beach Hop 2023. I will just point out that I've done it though on the dates for the Taste of Marta Ring, um, it should be in place from the 31st of March to the 2nd of April, not the 2nd of March, 23, so that and Donna's going to end that for me. Okay, okay. 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 any discussion? How do, how do we police it? The police. The police, 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 police. police. <laughs> so I, the, once this has gone through our report, I forward a copy of the um, resolution to, to the local police and they right. can yeah. Cool. Thank you. And having had discussions with the local police, they are very, very strong in the support of this and very committed in terms of manpower and resources to keeping everything even that has been good. Just for obviously, I completely understand that but this, but can, for people that might not, what, what's the difference between a temporary alcohol ban and a permanent alcohol ban? Like, you can't go into a public place and drink in tens, but you can't go to reserve and. So, what, what's the difference between a permanent one and a temporary one? Yeah. <laughs> Over to Brian. They're essentially the same. So the, the, the permanent alcohol bans are what you said as a council in our, in our bylaw that exists all year round. Um, a temporary one is one that isn't anticipated, but the bylaw allows for provisions to be by one for situations like events. So um, uh, the Bangatar uh, event, as an example, all you're doing is putting the same exact area of the bylaw in summer, just in a period that's outside of the normal thing that's in the bylaw. Um, in terms of your answer, Thames, um, there are reserves that you can go drink at. Um, 
So, um, thinking of like the taste of Masarani, for example, all the um, areas outside of that event uh, have a gun call ban, but the the people who are running taste of Masarani seek their own license to be able to sell their wine and beer and stuff just for that period of three days. Yeah. Clear in my head. It'd be interesting to touch on that little the purpose of the ban is to ensure that we don't need to control too much to bring up those moments. As you can imagine, um, the meeting will notice the water and don't want people to turn out intoxicated. Um, they, you know, so we want to put our hands in terms of putting more into that once it's been there. So just a large scale of numbers of those locations that come. Okay. And just for the record, um, since we're in an open public forum, uh, Taste of Margarine, the video in the Dixieland band will be played. Could you fill the team of race course? Here's a challenge. Okay, I'd like to move the motion. Please, all those in favour? Aye. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Item 4.1. Thank you so much, Kirsten and Lauren. Item 4.1. Outside the budget requests for comments. Um, we're going to move on a second to receive this. Thanks. Councillor Rebel and Councillor Barak. Thank you. Um, we'll take the report as read and some good pictures in there. Thank you. And I'll welcome Ed Bailey to speak to this. Uh, good morning. As you can see, we've had a, another storm event uh, requiring uh, repairs and additional funding. Uh, the report is basically detailing uh, the costs for that storm event. We are in the situation now where we're attracting 74% of our uh, funding subsidy from what we call Tarmi. Um, so obviously, the cost of council reduced proportionately. Um, as ever in these funding events, we deal with the initial impact. Uh, we then look at what long term implications are. So we have a three stage approach. The OPEX budget is the removal of the immediate disruptions. The first phase of the CAPEX budget is investigation into the uh, more extensive um, collapses that we incurred, or incurred rather, and the capex budget for the following financial year is our estimation of permanent repairs to do whatever damage has occurred. So that can take on questions. I have one. Uh, the 71 percent is that cumulative or is that per individual event? It's um, once it ticks over the, the normal 51% fire threshold, every event following that event is at 71% until we hit, or I don't know if we never do, the, the major event threshold, in which case we're looking at something like 91%. Mm -hmm. and that would be uh, volcanic eruptions, tidal waves, that sort of thing. So we, we have. Kicked over into 71%, and that will be the case until the end of our financial year. That's correct, yeah. Which aligns with theirs? Yes. Thank you. Any questions? I just Any think questions? it's. Sorry, sorry. I'll go to Councillor Brown first. 71% or 91%. Um, has that been activated in any way? For example, the Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really important stuff to sort out, uh, Ed. Um, time frames to repair this. Are you comfortable with uh, repair times? Um, it's very much a case we need to do geotechnical investigations on major repairs. Uh, we've already started those. 
We've got initial ideas on what the final design will be already. It may be that we actually would be able to undertake repairs in advance of next financial year, but at the moment, this is where we are. So if we rolls over into the next financial year, it still capsulates in this? With yes. The, it does, right. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question of council. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I've been here now for four months, and I think every single council meeting has yes. been speaking about a storm event. Yep. Um, and it's eroding, it's not like we can just leave it and walk away from it. Mm -hmm. So it sort of occurs to me that you've been here today while we're going through a decision. There isn't really a decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm just testing with the council would be happy with the delegation, and I'm you know, thinking about it. Um, if this takes five hours of his time to produce a report, he could have saved 15 hours of you know, his time in a delegation just to get on with this and report back in a later date. So just to stay with it, whether that oh, might be an option. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. notes yeah. was one sailing, it's going to happen, it has to happen. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because we last week and so we discussed it and you, I think John you had looked at the agenda and I said is there anything in there and he said well there's a storm event we've just got to approve that you know mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a yeah. yeah. break all my it has to has to happen yeah. is it yeah, sorry is it chair, sorry, yeah. uh, funding through Wakita today have they challenged any of the decisions Every time we have a storm event, we have to justify our request to market at time. They come out on site and inspect the issues. They go into full detail on them. Okay. Yeah, that's happy with me. So in terms there? of the delegation, um, can we address that now or do we have to have a separate resolution? I think, next yeah, I think we'll come back to that because we need more detail to bring it. It, it does, but also through the chair, we do have um, delegate, we do have our delegation up to a certain amount. Um, as as the clerk on the agenda, you'll, you'll see delegation just so as you can to you through the US side So that's just delegations already there, it's just, just in the email? That may be, but that might be the bank and then we can use delegation and then it's got to a point to not do it long, but they're really how that is through, through your chief executive delegation policy, and that would be the way of doing it. So, we're going to be in a resolution for that, too, and we just need to. Well, we can't do that today, but please, please have a look at that and come back to you. Yeah. Um, but if, It'll be a threshold number. Part of it, if we do exercise your delegation, part of that is the next council meeting, you would bring a report back to council to say the exercise your delegation for this. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I'd, I think I'd like to know, Aileen, is um, why can't the delegation go your way? Just for the council to be informed of what it, it's still mm -hmm. informed of what's happening out there, you know, on road damage and stuff. So, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. If we can save any time around. Absolutely. Sitting in front of you. Yeah, okay. Unless you want to come see us here. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Sorry, are we in favour of council, Aileen? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he laughed. He laughed at us. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate for me. Um, all right, so I'd like to put the motion, please. All those in favour? Oh, uh, okay. All those against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. And report one two solid waste services, fees and challenges. So, uh, can I get a mover and a second to receive this report, please? Councillor Brown, Councillor Collingwood. There is an extensive breakdown of the fees and charges uh, attached in this report. Um, I'd have to say that um, the numbers uh, are. Uh, I water. Yes, that's the word. Thank you. Um, so what, what we'll do is we'll ask Bruce and Anna to speak to this report and then we'll have a Thank you, Council. Uh, so through the Chair, the, um, the numbers are significant increases on what we've had. Um, 
anyone that's uh, been around, that won't be a surprise. It still means it's, it's still eye watering when you do see it. But it shouldn't be a surprise. We've been talking about and anticipating a significant jump uh, in the solar based costs. So obviously, we've been tendering any of our um, services costs have gone up significantly across the full range of services, but particularly solar based around um, some of the changes, the legislative requirements, moving to food waste, weekly food waste um, collection. Uh, yeah, so just just very high costs. Um, they're, they're reflected in here, as um, the worship mentioned. Um, I think the other key point to um, to raise, and probably you don't want to stealing your thunder um, this one, Anna, is that this report is really about um, looking at at the options and getting permission or approval, right? Approval to go and consult with the community around those two options and around what our preferred options. So when we consult with the community, we always like to have a preferred option. Um, and say this is what we've built our budgets up on, this is the preferred option, however we haven't decided, or council hasn't decided, and we're just out of consultation. So that's the key uh, key decision for council today um, around the um, approvals to go out and consult. Uh, I've probably missed a whole lot of things, so uh, is there anything? <laughs> You've anything covered it well. <laughs> yeah, so we've got the, the two options, um, and, and the, the recommended option, as mentioned in the report, is the pay as you throw option mm, yeah. um, with a, a, a tag price that's likely to be um, $7.15. So we'll go to Councillor Sinclair and then Councillor Ribbon. Well, I think Peter had his hand up first, but I'll take it. Um, so, just a question in terms of the process of doing this. So, the resolutions that we've got, the suggested resolutions, don't have a preferred option as to pay as you throw or the rate. Would that come later when we adopt the um, consultation document for the entire annual plan? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I find myself wanting to understand a little bit more detail sure. as to why it's moved from, let's say, the top of the list, 194 to uh, 491 in, in the, um, on, on the table there. As I understand, the explanation is that there's government fees moving to food waste mm -hmm. and moving, changing from bag to wheelie bin, mm -hmm. right? So, is is that what's taking? Is that what is causing this? You know, two hundred ninety-six. There's, that's actually um, so. There's two different models in here. So we've got um, so when we look at the one hundred ninety-four, for example. Yeah. That uh, 491 is if it's um, if there's no tag, there's no prepaid tags, yeah, and yeah, yep. it's fully rate power funded. Yeah. So you would expect that because what you're possibly paying at the moment on bag, you know, prepaid bags, or if it was prepaid tags, would be a couple hundred dollars a year anyway, um, depending on what your volume it is. So if we're looking at the the kind of the current pay as you throw model with the bags plus that. Um, <laughs> So, um, if, if we looked at continuing the pay as we throw uh, model, that's uh, yeah, three hundred and sixty-three dollars plus what we. Sure. Yeah. So I get the difference between two models. I guess what I'm trying to understand is the quantum. So how much of the hundred and hundred and sixty-nine, or how much of the two hundred and whatever, is associated with government fees? How much is associated because we're now putting in food waste? How much is associated with the fact that we're moving from bags to wheelie bins, right? Yeah, so I suppose with the disposal fees, we have the waste um, waste levy um, as well as the ETS um, fees. So I, I would have to find out the specific details of that portion in relation to the disposal because the disposal um, aside from the landfill disposal fee itself, and as well as those levies, we've also got the costs of um, transportation, haulage, processing within within those costs as well. So we'd really need to break it down further. Okay. Thank you, because I think that's what people will need to understand. I think to make a statement, we shouldn't be surprised that there's an increase in, in, in waste. I think people understand, okay, well, why is there an increase? In this? And to just say, well, it's based to wheelie the food waste. Well, yeah, that's so through the chair. So we will be providing more information. Obviously, when we go out and consult, so there will be more information that will come back to the council. So we can definitely include some more detail around 
how that breakdown of all those costs is coming through and whether it's a little change in the, the rate. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate. And um, having been walking at Kuatumi yesterday and seeing fly dumping, and then driven over the Tapu Corrigan and seeing fly dumping again, I personally don't think the differential between what your rate will be for the fiber tags as well is significant enough. There was a huge reaction to the increase in the cost of the bags. So looking at a tag at $7.50, I think being visible rather than not quite as visible being in your annual rates, are we going to see more fly tipping because those tags are so expensive? Mm -hmm. The other part of me understands that you've got people who are doing a really good job of reducing their waste and you're kind of penalising them and you think everybody else is rubbish as well and the little old lady has got one with a good bag um, But I'm going to come down on the side of it's going to great and there are no tags to pick around with. So, sorry, 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 how much room does council have to move under the revenue and financing policy that will be a factor in this? So there will be a governing factor that we've got to take into account. We need to get more advice on this. Um, That's why I'm uncomfortable with the recommended option being mooted at this meeting. I would I, I find people to express what they think, including myself. But I would be happier to hear what the community was saying, and also to take the advice from the staff. When, when, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, when we go to consult, we're going to have to go to Which is pretty annoying because all the mm -hmm. councils do want to keep things there before they do anything, but the, the way we consult requires a third option for people to be in test students. Can, can we not get that, if that advice is a, as important as it is, we should have that advice now. If we're going to pass a resolution on that, a preferred option. So, can so I just test that a little bit further? So, the revenue and financing policy that we have tells us how much of our money we're going to collect their rates, how much we're going to collect from their users, and so on. So, I'm kind of looking at Hayden as the finance person about presumably this is we compliant with the proposal in front of us with the revenue and financing policy. And if councils were to the other night to try and turn it around and we actually find ourselves coming up against that policy, which we've made the change very OTP and Yeah, so currently our policy says um, with the chief that it's um, fees and charges in the mid. So if we went from a ball rating model, that would be outside of our policy. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's the important point that. So yeah, one of those do. options would, would be a breach of our. So then it shouldn't be an option. So if we're breaching our own policy, that should need to be in the report. So to the chief, we're going to make a decision to step outside the policy. Yes, so we can give you policy, but I think that information that Hayden has provided is useful content. Um, yeah. The other thing I would say, while we're just talking about the bag, the tags, and all the rest of it, the way we, we've kind of anticipated the cost at the moment is um, the tag, this fortnightly tag, is, is actually probably about the same as the bags and we're slightly under because at the moment the bags are $3.90. So yeah. going back to the earlier discussion, if you look at the moment, for someone, someone like myself, you know, I'm buying these for my bag a week at the moment for family. And so that's, uh, that's over $200 a year that I'm adding on for the fixed charge and nothing more. So that gives you a bit more, of a, a bit more of a quantum, you know, so that's a bit of a discussion that we need to understand. Um, but again, I think, you know, there's, we don't have to decide today on the third option. So uh, when we've got that in the resolutions, there's going to be you know future steps um, to go through. I see Mo just waving his hand at me over there. Um, so yeah, but yeah. Uh, so can we go Mo and then Terry's other questions? Yeah, uh, now I'm specified, but some you just could have a late or share just a problem. And that's saying, you know, sort of previous question. Just in terms of the EDS. And could be supposed to charge the government is supposed to levy. So the ETS land could be supposed to charge now current budget is about 425,000. That's this thing over there. The next one that goes up to 900,000. The government is supposed to levy a budget for this year is 177,000. That goes up to 950,000. 
if you combine the two, that's a 209% increase between this year and next year, which is beyond that control. So that yeah. accounts for a lot of those challenges. Yeah, um, just through the chair, um, I'll speak on behalf of the ratepayers of Tiger or Parliament and Wampata, who all come to the beach to their bats as they pay four years' rates on and pay an extra uh, fee to pick up bottles in the air when it's just the rates they pay on, but they accept that. Uh, they will not be happy with paying a full amount when they're only there for a, a month or two and a full year. So I'm certainly opting for the second option. Tag system and um, and there will be some grumbling about that, but anyway, I think that's a better option for me. Yeah, I support what uh, Terry just said in terms of our non resident ratepayer population. I think a pay as you throw will be perceived to be much more fair across the board. Yeah, so through the chair, and, and I, I think I might have just touched on it before. It's a real balance, you know, about how you do this because we're trying to incentivize. Waste minimisation and, and reduction. And so, you know, if you do have a patient throw, that provides a bit of that incentive, you know, for people to try and manage some of their costs. And, you know, people just don't like wasting money. And so they generally want to try and do things more efficiently and have a, um, pay a portion of it um, on, a, on, a, on a weekly or fortnightly, sorry, um, tag that they need. The other challenge that we have is obviously there's um, commercial providers out there. And so we have to be careful when we provide. When we price things like the tags or bags at the moment, you know, if we just price them too high, it's a really big, great incentivization for waste minimization. Suddenly, we price ourselves out of the market, and suddenly, then uh, people aren't using our service uh, and we're not getting the income that we need to provide the service. We've already got, we've got the rates, but we don't have the income coming in. So, it's a, it's a balance, you know, a certain percentage of income from tags, percentage of income from fixed charge, and obviously, we have tax restriction with these as well. So, there is a real um, you know, challenge around that. There's, a, there's the the financials and the accounting of it, but there's also the gut feel about what feels mm -hmm. right, you know, for people who maybe go and buy a tag or rush or back or whatever. It's, so. it's a shame that it, it is actually cultural because both Japan and Switzerland, as two mm -hmm. examples, charge like a branded bill mm -hmm. for you to dispose of rubbish and they just don't seem to have to have a flight of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to see, you know, Bruce and I have talked about graphics. Yes. Yeah. And um, communicating to people yes. in a way that's low on words but yep. high on graphics. This is a great education moment. We can investigate this. Um, great shame. Um, that was a, through the chair, that was the other point I was going to mention is fly something is always a, um, is always a risk when you make any change. What I would say though is that um, my experience, I wouldn't overstate that because whenever we've made changes in the past, the world's going to end with fly tipping as a new fly tipping everywhere. And sometimes you get a slight increase, but we've actually always had fly tipping from when we didn't have um, made rubbish bags, you know, so it's, it's continues all the way through. There's, there's um, people in our communities who are going to do those kind of things, no matter what the charges, even if you make it free. So we, you know, and again, we just think probably will get a bit of a rise, um, but we can deal with that. I think, excuse me, the chair, the uh, fly tipping we find are more in the fridges and Couches bigger and, things yeah. that wouldn't go into rubbish bin anyway. So. Yeah. Um, so to me, the fly tipping is a thing that I think 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 um, I'm really getting the sense from councillors that they're looking for a lot more info and a lot more detailed info on the breakdown of these charges. I think there's some some important cogs that need to be wrapped around this um, as we go because these are significant uh, not only increases but changes in the way things are the services are charged for and um, delivered. The timing, this is the proposal, is that this be included in the annual plan consultation, so it's in the next year. Right. So this isn't a separate consultation, it's included in the annual plan consultation. Um, Mo, can I just ask you to clarify that I've got a note here to myself the value of the landfill contract because Council has a separate contract with landfill operator for the disposal of waste at the landfill. Is that the numbers that you were telling us about a minute ago, or is that separate again? Some of these are the government claims that you have to pay regardless whether it's landfill, disposal or not. 
this forward oil. So this is the waste levy, which is currently thirty dollars a ton. It's going to sixty dollars a ton by twenty twenty four. So again, I think as councillors, we need to see a chart of the impact of those levies. Um, so that's the levies. What is the value of our contract over and above the eight one million dollars that we've got with waste management? What is the value of the separate contract with landfill? Can you uh, put a number on there? I can't recall that off the top of my head what it is. Obviously, we've got to be going, going out early next year to re, um, to re tender that contract because that expires. And so we will need to go back to the market. And there's obviously only a couple of players in that, in that space. So that's Tura Hill or Hampton Downs. Pretty much. Yeah, those are probably the likely two. Yeah, it's unlikely we can get up to Rose Down. Are we do that direct? Sorry, Bruce, do we do that directly yeah. with? Yeah. With the landfill operator? Yes, through the chair we do it direct. So that's a separate contract to our actual operations uh, contract that we have in place for anything. Transport to that landfill operator. Obviously, if we said Hampton Downs, then it affects it for longer distance. We yes. It affects how, how is that extra transportation cost managed in terms of? So through, the, so through the chair, that's, that's part of our current contract, and we've just there'd be a variation to what the cost is depending on which landfill they're disposing of. So we'd actually take that cost into account when we make go through and do the procurement of the waste of the landfill contract. Yeah, those are going to be considerations that we've made. Does waste management own to a here, doesn't it? Correct. Yes. Does it own Hampton Downs? So there, there could be an issue around that, obviously, with this. Um, I don't know. So that would be an, an issue, I suppose. It's it's really the individual players, how much they really want us to they want our, our business. So, yeah, we just go through that, go through that process. So is this a renegotiation, or is it? No, it's going back to the market. Yeah, it's going back to the market. Okay. Uh, we had an extension on the previous contract, a, a short extension. We now it's our time to go back to the open market. Right. See the pros and that in yeah. Touch up when it's okay. So, um, I get being mindful that we're, you know, being recorded in an open forum, and if this gets too close to not being appropriate, please let me know. This one of the things it says about the important to consider the following aspects about the private commercial operators in the area, and we don't want to be pricing our tags above what they're offering. But is that with that current tag potential, what that might be? Is that anywhere near what another operator is currently? Yeah. It's, in, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's in the ballpark, yeah. Right, okay. And are people mostly um, are people mostly picking a private operator because there's not council services in that area, or are they just doing it because of Convenience or so it be a combination, but a lot of it's that people want to use a bin. They don't want to have to use bins, and so they like the ability to use a bin or anything in the bin. And so, um, so yeah, it's convenience mostly. There are some areas that are service that we don't service. So, um, so there'll be a mix of rural and urban getting well, those collected. Well, what you'll find, and this is the reason why we've got to be careful not to price ourselves out of the market. We go all the way up to you know Coldwater and up in all those areas and collect. A lot of those providers are not going to go all the way up there. So if you ring up from up there and say, hey, can you come and pick up? You know, we've been commercially, they go, nah, sorry, we have to go to Thames. Oh, okay, right. um, we just, so they'll just pick the easy ones, the ones that are all in nice urban areas and close to you. They do do some rural, so I'm just kind of illustrating a point, really, is that they kind of pick the eyes out of, like, they pick all the easy ones out of the district, and then we're left as an organisation, as council, we've got obligations, we're providing regular service, and we have to go all the way out to these extremes, and we're actually you know, not getting out. Efficiency around the economies of scale, we're only even up income for the tax. So, so it's just again about that trying to kind of Thank you. So, the, the question that I'm looking at is we're looking at the resolution, which is to send this report or approve this report for consultation based on the information that's in there at the moment. Um, I would prefer to see more information before we. Sign this off, ready for consultation. Two questions: Do we have time to do that? If we defer this, ask for more information. Do we have time to do that? And does anyone else around the table feel like they'd like to see more information or more detail before this goes to public consultation? 
through the chair, I, you know, I think it raises quite a number of issues, and you know, I've heard the arguments in regard to our non-resident ratepayers. I look at the costs that are in here for the rateable portion uh, that we're charging, and I presume that also includes the basic infrastructure costs of uh, of our street bins and, and those type of things that we charge back into our rates. Uh, so through the chair, the litter bins? Yes. Um, no, they're, oh, they're into the... Uh, uh, so, so, you know, we haven't talked about hybrid models of within pricing, you know, to to, to sort of really try and balance this at a, um, a price where the tags are, are a lower cost, but the, the rateable price is a bit higher, so that you actually charge a little bit to the non-resident ratepayers for the basic infrastructure and support that is being provided, I'm not suggesting, you know, I just think that we should explore that all of those sort of opportunities to, to sort of arrive at something which which looks overall a, a reasonable picture that would be saleable to uh, the wider group of people. So through the chair, so the two options, the one option is everything on the rates, and the other option is the hybrid option of a fixed charge plus you pay them for the tags. So we've tried to capture that because you can't go fully on the tags, it's just like um, charging for water by volume, you can't put all on the water by volume charge, especially in a district such as ours, where we have to provide the new point for the infrastructure and then running here for a short time of the year. So that is the kind of hybrid option that we presented. And the, and the way we put that up is based on what we think is realistic around those tags, you know, and what will actually fly and not price it out of the market, but also give us enough incentive for people to try and minimise waste. So mm -hmm. you you could actually you go with that. that. Yeah, you could play with that a little bit more. You know, and you can say, let's not go seven fifty, let's go six dollars or a fortnight, or let's go the other way and go to nine dollars. Again, being careful that you don't price yourself out of the market. So, and a supplementary question through the chair: if, if people exceed what they have with their one forty lease, correct? What difference are there? Are there bags as well? Or so what? through the chair. So what would happen then is, is we'd be encouraging people they need to and take a bit more responsibility to go to the transfer station themselves. So at that time, they'd probably buy a black bag, they'd put the additional waste in there and go to the transfer station or um, put on the trailer or, or look after that themselves. So that's a, another quite significant change, isn't it? Yeah. Because they could just buy additional blue bags. Correct. Yeah. So. yeah, correct. It is, it is. And again, that's the trade-off, you know, where we have this high demand, get us bins, we want bins, we don't like the blue bags. And the trade-off from that is that, you know, if you're someone who ends up putting a lot of blue bags during summer, and I'll keep saying, you're suddenly now going to go, okay, well, I've got this convenient bit, but now I've got the inconvenience of taking additional overflow rubbish for the transfer station myself. So, again, that's a, that's a huge thing around education. Um, we, we built that into the contract. Um, so, Mum and Anna worked hard on that around the transition from what we're currently doing to what we're, we're moving to doing. And so, it is a big behavioural change. And so, we are going to do a lot of comms for it around that. So, the almost teams involved. And, and so, the additional yeah. costs of having your own compressor to do. <laughs> yeah, so um, so yeah, it's definitely a big change. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so the, the change is big, but I think this focus is now more on the recovery centres being up and running yep. and making sure that we're doing those really well, because that's will be the demand from the public saying, we want to take these other places somewhere else, we don't want to pay for it going out to, out to the door. So I'd, re I'd expect the council to really elevate that side of it and get those things in place. Yep, and that sort of balances some of the concerns that you'll have from... Yeah, I think that's through the chair. I think that's probably more like you're looking at the transfer station fees, you know, because it's that kind of stuff. If you take the transfer station, that they can convert into the um, into reuse. And stuff. Yeah, but they'll pay and get the transfer station again. Yes, yeah, correct. So if they can take it for somewhere where they don't have to pay it, they'll be very happy. Yep, totally. And all I, was, I guess my point was that um, uh, the weekly curbside reviews is often not the kind of stuff that you would take to the... Um, well, you centre, so some of it could do, but I think, you know, again, it's a good point. If the toast is going to go in the bin and they think, well, I've got to pay for the transfer station, I'll chuck it into the rubbish and go to the dump. So that could yeah. go to a re recovery centre and get re-cleared and go out to reuse. That's part of the at yeah, the risk of not drilling too deep, I think also when you're talking about reducing the amount of waste in those blue bags, then we do also need to be communicating the fact that we now have the soft plastic yes. option, and typically anything up to a third of my yes. kitchen waste, of my rubbish bag, 
goes into another bag to be soft plastic. So that's another thing to say to people, hey, look, you know, you can reduce your waste by this amount by yeah. taking that soft plastic off. But we need those collection points in place. At the moment, we've only got a few of them. We haven't got them all around the yeah, I just, Sorry. Not just, just, stupid yeah. just for a second. Partly because we've got the waste strategy uh, mm. workshop this afternoon. True. Um, the motion on the table is do we approve the proposal to uh, send this through all consultation in its current form? And that's the question I think as councillors, do we approve this to go through in its current form or what? do we want to see more information before we approve it for consultation? Does it need to come back to the table? <coughs> Well, it's going to come back to the table anyway as part of the, the border consultation document for the annual plan. So we will see it again. So it's just. just so I guess the question is, when we see it again, will we have an opportunity to change? So through the chair, I think um, Councillor Cynthia's point's a good one. Um, it will be coming back as part of the annual plan. The other thing I'd say is that if we had the figures here for you today, what would you do with those? Like you can't say, no, we don't want to do it, because it's not like we've just built in all these additional costs and you look through them and go, oh, that one's okay, landfill costs, contract costs. No, nah, don't, we don't want you to do that. Yeah. We haven't included anything in there that's discretionary mm. as part of the rates. So the rates are what they are, but I totally hear the, mess, the message around the table that you councillors need to have better visibility over how those are built up. And so 100% we've heard that and taken that away. It will be included as part of the information that comes back to you as part of the annual plan so that you have that. And obviously our customers have it in a nice, take um, councillor Collins' point. Easily digestible for him, lots of pictures. Um, and so, so yes, yeah, so I guess that's where I'd, I've. Um, that's, that's, what I've that's what I've heard. Part of that is timing of Bruce because when this goes through today and the public right and you have the chance to start looking at this, you have got the question. And so, for councillors that have some visibility around, and there's moments detailing the increases in fees. For councillors to have some answers to some of those, okay, well, this is happening, here's why. And that comes back to Thomas, who we also to councillors having a broad understanding. So, yeah. Yeah, and I just want to make a comment too, Bruce. I need Tom's around this saying what, what you're going to do, the bigger picture. I know you're going out past the public, we're going to do this, it's going to cost that much. But what are we doing around that resource and recovery area to complement some of this? Extra costs that we're going to you're going to bear. Yes, yeah, correct. We've heard you loud and clear on that. That definitely is already part of the comms that you know as we can with uh, the comms team on. So. so the question is, do we uh, do we vote to put this through for consultation in the annual plan today? Um, and I think at this stage we need to put the motion. Yeah, well, I think we've got to decide. I've got two options. The one comment I'd make on this is that we, we really need to put this in the context of the people that are struggling at the moment around the place. And this is a really significant increase in price that they will see through this process. And except all the points around advocacy and communication and so on, but I think there'd be an expectation that we've explored all the avenues around those those prices, and I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable about whether that's met that threshold. Yeah. Ben, I'm going to support what Robert said just a few minutes ago. Let's just throw the bone out there, see how well Tudor comes back, because we've got to start the head roll at some stage, and you know, we really do. We'll get another look at it later on. I mean, I haven't said much through this last discussion, but it's really irrelevant. We've just got to get it out there. There is enough information. Let's get the feedback. We're going to make the choice, don't we? Yeah. But not today. No, no, we're just. Make that no, not, today. not today. We're deciding. We're just deciding. Chuck it out there. Yeah. Chuck it out there. Yeah. See what comes back. Oh, right. See what we've got to deal with. Aileen and then Warren stood at the moment. But um, this may not be an issue, but can we just put it to that something in the resolutions that says subject to staff checking compliance with regular finance and policy. Oh, yes. Just to give us a ring or ring in case we have yes. uh, yeah. to Yes. Good voice. Thank you. Thank Has Council ever considered opting out of solid waste and letting the whole thing go private private entity? Through the plan don't know. I don't know the answer. Sorry. 
Sorry, the chair. Um, so that was discussed um, quite a few years ago about a council getting out of it. Uh, so a number of councils didn't used to do anything, they weren't in this space. Basically, everything's changed, and all those councils that went in this space are all out in this space, and it's a, it's a public service that we provide. Um, we still have obligations under the um, Waste Management Act, I think it's called, around managing and again the WMP, uh, managing and minimising the waste that's leaving our district, even if we're not involved in it. If we're not involved in it, it's very hard for us to influence anything around the civilization. We've got commercial providers that, from their perspective, um, as a general rule, the yeah, bigger is better, and so the more they kind of um, more waste they get, the more money they're getting to transfer it to uh, transfer it to the landfill. So, if council wants to do the right thing and minimise and reduce what's leaving the, our district from a waste perspective, we need to be in this place. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking of, of Napier. I mean, if anyone ever spent any time in Napier on rubbish day, there's all sorts of different coloured bins appear out on the street, and different contractors are picking up their own bins. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Warren. Resolution. Yeah. 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 Resolution. I'll repeat the, uh, the, the Thames Coromandel District Council receives the solar waste fees and charges in the fall of November and approves the proposal to consult on options in the plan March 2023 consultation. Yeah. I've got the resolution for those. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Everyone should do on that? Yep. Change your mind to be compliant with. Okay. So it won't go out until we validated that. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, we're clear on the amended resolution. It's going we out. Just need to check that the movement's happened. Councillor Grant, you're happy with that? So, can I just clarify? We can say it won't go out until this is actually now going to consultation. This will give the approval subject to the check against revenue and finance policy. Once that check is in place, it will go to consultation. That's my understanding. It will be part of the annual yeah. plan consultation. So there'll be another process around the annual plan where stuff comes back, yeah. back, back around all the different things. We're going to get something on the new match. So that gives so it a little bit of a chance. Yeah. yeah. So it's on the start of roll. We have the opportunity, correct me if I'm wrong, to add in more information to, to support the proposal. Okay. We won't be able to change the options, but we can add information. Is that right? Correct. Correct, yeah. All right, Councillor Cole, you're happy that the Sorry, yeah. 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 All right. the resolution, please. Resolution, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Those against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, now we go to the Yeah. 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 So, okay. The item 4.3 nomination of the members for voting review section 17A. Um, bring a mover and a second of the list, yep. please. Okay. Well, well, number the proposal is that we receive the nomination of elected members for the section 17 a and we nominate two councillors to the group of staff and consultants on the section 17 a voting review i'm going to be absolutely bold here and suggest that we nominated john from the regional transport committee this morning and so that he could be one of those people and i understand my um colleague over there peter has had a very a strong interest in roading, and so I'm going to. I would like to nominate Peter as well. Thank you. Peter and John. Um, so, just uh, for transparency, I've had prior discussions uh, prior to this meeting with Councillor Rebel to um, gauge his interest in being involved in this. He put his hand up and said yes. He's very happy to be involved. Um, I've had a discussion yeah. with Councillor Morrissey and also with Councillor Dotty. Um, to gauge his interest. Um, Councillor Morrissey feels that, and I might let him explain it, 
if there's a little bit of a disconnect between the two, Councillor Goss Godley has said he's quite happy to be involved in this process. Um, I might ask Councillor Morrissey. Well, there's not a lot more to say after you said that, Nick. It's 100 percent on the button, and if Gary wants to um, take the role on, I'm actually happy to do so. So, yeah. So what I'd like to do is ask Mo and Bruce just to give us a little bit of background to this, and then we'll. Gary, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. So we'll ask Bruce and Mo to just give us a little bit of background, and then um, we'll continue. To Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, yes, so obviously the experience self explanatory section 70A review of rating activities for council. So, this is um, this training, this first kind of cab off the ramp as far as reviewing our services, how we do it. Um, we've learned over the previous ones that we've done that it's very um, useful to have elected members involved, and we promise Mr. Mayor will take good care of them. Um, and, uh, and it's very useful to have elected member in at those um, in a number of workshops that we'll be holding with a number of um, ourselves with specialists, consultants, as we work through those options and then um, you know, that, that provides uh, the different perspectives, but it also provides that oversight through the process. Um, but I think it's very useful when we come back to the back to the full council and anything. Um, so yes, yeah, so it is um, yeah promoting um, a bit of closure of ears here. Um, it's not always the most exciting uh, topic. Uh, it's half our budget, man. It's, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big, um, big activity. And we find it really exciting as engineers. <laughs> um, I understand that not everyone does. So, um, so yeah, but like you like say, I think it's probably not much else for me to add. I've probably rambled on enough. Um, happy with um, the nomination that you decide um, that you want to work with us on this. Happy with that. Oh, did you have anything to add? It's just just one comment really it's to cash in on the opportunity that arises once every five minutes or so to have a look at are we heading the right way do we do something different that we carry on doing the same thing. Oh I'd just like to nominate. Oh that's what I was gonna do. I'd like to nominate I'd like to carry to, to stand with people on this. Thank you. I'd like a second or something. Yeah. Robert? Yeah. So Gary, any comments? Questions? No, it's uh, it's it's certainly like I feel I, I'm feeling weak after the discussions on the waste problem. Uh, ratings, I feel a little bit more positive about, but uh, no, I think uh, I can work very well with uh, Peter. Thank you, Gary. Right, Martin. Sorry, did 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 Robin's nomination of Peter get seconded? I don't oh, think we need to. Gary just nominated. And I'm Gary and, and Gary together. Oh, you just said, yeah. Okay. Do you need to those or do you just put it four Presumably they get named in their resolution. So, what I'd like to propose is that um, Councillor Rebel and yeah. Councillor Gottlieb are the councillors who are appointed to that process. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion is carried. Congratulations, Jim. Congratulations. My potholes are going to get fixed. Yes. This is not to be used for personal the roundabout. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. District wide leader. So everyone else is dining. Dining. Yeah. No, so, item 5.1. Welcome. Well, I can make it a move for a second that we'll see. Can I get a move for I'll second. I'll second. Gary. I, I just have to say that I know Craig State uh, uh, very well, and uh, he's a, a top man. We, we're lucky you. to have him there. Thank you. So I'm going to take the report as read. This is pretty straightforward. I'll ask Donna to, uh, to make any comments or should we just open it up? I'm happy to open up the discussion. As the report says, um, normally that would come to normally this would come to the audit risk committee actually um, before obviously before um, the AGM, the LG Bay AGM. But given the timing that we received the advice from the shareholders council um it just didn't didn't fit in with any of our reports our reporting so that's why we're coming back to ask for retrospective approval thank you uh, normally they you know every year we, we do always go 
go with the recommendation from the Shareholders Council. That's what they're there for to help us through this process. So. Is there any questions or discussion? Thank you, Nile, for the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hello, I'm Donna. Item 5.2 respect Item 5.2, can I get a mover of a second to receive the motion, please? Very and regular, thank you. Okay. Motion is that we receive the budget provision and report and we adopt the October 2022 budget provision. Um, I'll take the report as read. Hayden, do you have anything that you want to add or should we have um, oh, for the chair, probably the biggest thing is the depreciation movement. Yeah, um, which is, yeah a real issue to sort of um, uh, Previously in June, we came to council for a for approval to uh, defer some of the funding of that depreciation, um, but it will be a ongoing thing. It will it'll flow into the 23-24 annual plan as to how we really deal with that step change in depreciation. So we're looking at 393 million? Yeah, and it's had an impact of 8.9 million movement in depreciation. Yeah. So, so through the chair, if I can, um, Aidan, it's only in really two areas that work, wastewater. Yes. So when you say you're de deferring the depreciation, is it only on where the major assets are or across the Just board? the additional above, through the chair above, yeah. what was in the LTP. Yeah. Uh, while there have been major movements in roading and wastewater, the other assets also moved considerably yeah. because they've got a real high cost adjustment for factor which is based on inflation. So from memory that was like eight percent, which is, you know, that's a lot higher than sort of the typical two or three, you know, like it's, 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 it's a real movement in, in that um, factor. So even those ones, while they didn't move to the level of um, wastewater and roading, they still moved, you know, a lot more than we were anticipating. So you're looking at leveling those out a little bit as well? Through the chair, in terms of leveling out, how do you mean? Appreciation, dropping. Not yeah, down. yeah, yeah, through the chair. Right. I think I guess it's, you know, that's really prudent only to do for yeah. a very short period. So, you know, the discussion in the 23-24 annual plan is, you know, do we take some of that? Do we, you know, how do we sort of address that, that really big change? And, um, you know, obviously there are sort of central government movements around interest rates and that sort of curve inflation, and that may have an effect on sort of next year's rebounds. But yeah, at the moment that's where we're at. And just supplementary, if I can, just so when you look at those assets to see how if you can extend their life a bit further, is that? Um, um, I'd probably have to defer to Bruce for a second. Bruce, on that. I don't think you can. <laughs> Well, sometimes we look at the assets like footpaths and things like that yeah. and say, you know, that's the purpose for another. So, sorry, through the chair, um, from time to time, we have a long-term plan. We will look and review a lot of useful life, what we have the assets, but we've got to be very careful. If we've got like high depreciation, we're suddenly now going, let's extend the assets, let's be sweating the assets, mm -hmm. and the outcome is all of the not going to let us do that. Um, so, um, so it's, it's really just confirming we have a Okay. Yep. I, I guess the question that comes to my mind is what options do we have at the moment that are available to us when we're looking to adopt the boat revision? Um, we don't have a lot of options on the table, do we? Um, for dealing with the um, depreciation, we have the uh, option of not funding that increase this year. Uh, some of the other increases, we have the ability to use retained earnings. We don't have a heap of retained earnings, but um, we've, we've got enough to probably cover those increases at the moment. Uh, 
probably the big thing around inflation and it's really, really hard at the moment to kind of land on when that's going to be at the end of the year because it's, it's constantly moving and um, a lot of our contracts will have a CPI on the adjuster in there, which they do quarterly and at the moment those quarterly percentages are at least high really. So, um, you know, towards the end of the year as these interest rate rises start to buy, we might see some of that inflation come down and, and not have as big an impact, but at the moment uh, the March week forecast will be really, really important in terms of getting with the end of financial year and hopefully by then we'll have a good steer on the inflation. So at the moment, what's in front of us is to adopt the October 2022 budget revision. You're still working through what happens next and what our options might be. And you're talking about the March revision. Yes. It's at that stage that we might get some concrete options put in front of us that we can that we can make a decision on. We don't have those options in front of us right now. So all we all we can do is adopt the budget provision, am I right? Or I was yeah, that, that that's that's correct. Um so just just to give a bit of context around it. So this the nine million that is in for this the depreciation, we don't actually book that depreciation until we do all our year-end processes. So that would happen in about August of next year. So we've got some time. Um, we have got some time to work out how we're going to fund this, um, you know, what we're going, what our options are. And so we will be bringing tape back to you um, within that time to actually you know, provide you with some options to make some choices on how we're going to manage this going forward and how we can manage it for this year and next year. So you flag that there's an issue. Um, we know about it, we, we've got it right to point. You're working on what the options might be, but at the moment there's not a lot that we can do until we go through the next stages. We, yeah, we, need, to, we need to work out, work some options and work out some options and bring them back to which we'll do that early, early in the new calendar year. Thank you. John? So three, Chair, um, would, there, would there be any considerations here that there could be some one-off drivers within the costs? that might reverse itself over a, over a longer period of time so, um, that could be taken into account. Is, is that something that you've been thinking through? That, that it can be one of the things that we can look at, like look at historically what happens with these and some of them go up and then they yeah. do come down and as Hayden was talking before that, once the interest rate rises kick in, the, the inflation will come down, should come down a bit. So, even though these are what this is what the depreciation is, you could say that it's not going to be like that forever. So why should we be funding it at that high rate? So that's going to be some of the assumptions and some of the options that we'll have that we'll bring back to you to make a decision on. And also just to be clear that the whole two borders thing, you know, the, the value of depreciation of wastewater assets, for example, is still clouding out, it's still going through. All councils are in the same position. We still don't have that information, and that will have an effect um, in, in those workers that you do it. But we don't need to. Um, so, yes, it'll be great to have some options about funding. It would also be really good to for us to be clear about what things we need to be thinking about that doesn't exacerbate the situation. So obviously, when we do out-of-cycle budget requests, that makes it worse. You know, what are those other things that so if you're able to kind of educate us on the things that would that we can control that don't exacerbate the, the situation? And a good, a good opportunity to look at that is through the annual plan process for, for next year. And that's, that's about considering what projects you bring in, you know, looking at the capital um, budget as well and seeing, you know, what we can maybe not do right now. Um, and all that, all those things, all do play into it. Very good point. And he actually, uh, sorry, you raised a very good point, Peter. And one, I can already think of a couple of things in the future that this council could address if it's got the willpower to do so. But I'm not going to meet them here, but just remember this conversation. Mm. <laughs> yeah, similar points to bring up, obviously. 
the rating impact that we're just doing with the waste and snow is going to be a rating impact. This might have an impact on rating. Aileen, do you have any, any discussion on this? you want to make a comment? It's just one of those things that we're going to deal with, is it? Okay. I'm, I'm not too sure about that because Dominic will find the solution. <laughs> Good girl. Okay. Conscious of we've already indicated in the LTP a 7.7% rate increase for next year. This, all this is going to add to that, so we really need to think strategically about how we can manage that, Absolutely. how we can try and keep that, that rate down as much as we can. Yeah. And if the metrics in Wellington, they're not painting a good picture for next year at all, you know, when you look at what they're saying, so we've got to be mindful of that too. Still is in Northern Airport, although that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Somebody's telling me. Did you have something else? Else So, obviously, this is affecting councils all over the country. Is there any, in your networking and stuff, is there any indication what, and I'm not going to call it best practice because people are everyone's feeling their way, but what other councils and Maybe look into there that. are a lot of discussions going on at the moment, and there's a lot of discussions around um, the three waters mm. yeah. issue. Um, obviously, we're not the only council that's got got this situation with depreciation. So yeah, there are a lot of discussions around the sector, um, and we're talking to the DIA. We're, we're talking to LGNZ um, and Taito Irish to just see, you know, who could advocate on our behalf and how we can come up with a sector wide response to this issue rather than each council trying to um, work it out for themselves. Right. Thank you. So given that there's not a heck of a lot that we can do, I'd like to proceed with the motion um, and look forward to uh, more information in the next stages that Nora and Hayden are getting through. So uh, the motion is that we adopt the October 2022 budget revision. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. We come to item six point one two six two four. I like the good day. Um, yes, I fairly stand with the court. Um, of note that the third reading of the Water Service Assembly's bill has occurred. Sorry, I interrupt momentarily. Can I have a move and a second to receive the report? Please, Deli. Second. And Martin. And Sue. Right, so um, third reading has occurred. Um, There's lots of, lots of discussion in the media, which is the most interesting for local government events like that. Um, um, still working through RFIs and um, Bruce has got his hands really full as, as does other parts of the council. We have just the scope of information that DIA documents. They want information from all that other actions, from the customer inquiries, anything we have in here that relates to three waters they want to tell you And that's a really big ask because we're a big organisation that's spread across multiple places. So that's, that's challenging. Um, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, resource management reforms also introduced to the house. Um, actually, we moved down the winter, so that was an exciting week. Getting to read all 861 sections on the flight down. Um, so we are uh, working through submissions, and we'll be hearing from the staff around kind of the overarching themes. Um, with 861 sections in one bill, and I'm, I'm not sure what the seven, seven or eight schedules, and then the other bill. We're not going to get down to a cause by cause analysis for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to keep it at kind of a high level of things. Really. But just bear in mind that lots of the unintended consequences from these sorts of things really are at the section by section level. Um, so that's the challenge with these reforms is that it's, if you operate at the principal level, that they do look good. But the unintended consequences down in detail are, are something I think nobody's really got a good chance to think through. And with the deadline being the end of January, or it's been, sorry, it's been moved to the 5th of February, there's not a lot of time for people to get their heads around what the legislation says and how, how you might brain test it and a million scenarios that, that we can probably collectively um, apply it to. However, it is what it is. Uh, future Flag of Government was workshops on this week, so you will have seen the, the draft report that um, the 
Penny, so we're here to provoke discussion. Because uh, I'm going to title one on Tuesday because some other sessions um, around the region that are underway at the moment. Uh, update on projects there, and I'll be moving to discuss here and the next to the show line. Let's make one point, Amy, with the uh, fluoridation. That was interesting uh, that they uh, given the authority for four teams to commence it. Would ours be just a click on, Bruce, if it had to do? Uh, through the chair, no, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a click on, unfortunately. Um, so, as some of the members uh, may be aware, Tuesday morning, we have a fluoridation of the district. Um, so, yeah, we'd have to go out and install uh, the fluoridation and those other elements if we get the reason to do that. So, the team would have been working on costs, how much it will cost to do that. A lot of our supplies, um, some of them might be easy, but some will be more challenging. The Pongamas Arts, as an example, would be quite challenging because you've got multiple ball fields, so you need to have to build multiple fluoridation. What I would say about the, the new stuff that we have installed has been um, anticipated that fluoridation could be installed, but we have been anticipated. It's like a land section of the pipe, and where it, it, it would be built here and play out the network into the pipe work and the pipe there, and that's probably about as far as it goes at this stage. Thank you. Any further, Any further discussion or questions, Aileen? Can I just a couple of questions around the financial? Um, Reports. Um, first of all, can I just acknowledge and, and appreciate the fact that the variances are now reflecting variances of 20% or absolute value. So I think it's really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, finance costs. Um, I seem to recall at the last council meeting that the expectation is that they would remain, remain around about 100k, and in this one we're at 145k, um, which indicates which I think the discussion we had last time was are we actually got something here that's going to continue to blow out? Do we have a comment on that? I think it's worth seeing that in context because the the interest uh, income gains are quite significant as well. So yeah, I think they're ahead of the finance cost behavior. Hey, through the chair, yes we have actually pre-funded some of that debt. So um, there is actually interest revenue that is offsetting some of that interest cost, if you look. Um, we're ahead of 157k in terms of interest revenue. And um, yeah, that kind of went down, but yes. Um, we have about 60% of our full primary is fixed with good rates. Um, the remaining 40% is subject to, to the movements in interest rates. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Adrian. This is a question to the CE. Right, good. I, I feel deeply bound to ask a question, which is quite heavy lunch, but um, on page 2C, regarding implications of MBI and all our key regional economic fund, the 1.1C4 million cost escalation, which currently is underwritten by 10 community board. Can you tell me, I know it said won't come until the new year, should you not get that funding, do I understand the Thames Community Board the rivals at 1.3 million? Uh, we do have a feed came off the ramp that we haven't investigated yet, so um, That's I'm, sure sure. I'm sure there's a fourth and a fifth, but should they fail, yes, that would be the best. Did that, was that a motion at some point? The council decided, yeah. or did the community board make that generous offer? Well, council no. signed that off. Yeah, community board. Council. They came in the community board. Council. Are we signing that off? Yeah. Well, three years too late. Yeah. Adrian, just to, just to hopefully partly reduce your move, I have a letter from the Nyama Hooters office the other day. We raised it specifically with her, and she's put it out to Grant Robinson and Karen McAnulty as well, to, and, and various other um, cabinet colleagues. They are actively looking for solutions for that so that the Kings Field people don't have to run the I mean, it's already done your original, but so that the, that the money doesn't have to come from. So we are actively looking for 
in the system and solutions. So the same community board has already put a $1.4 million. Has that been used on the medicine and funding base about what they have some insurance? Well, that's that was the conduit going through yeah. to other ministers. So um, we do have options. We are actively exploring that. So I wouldn't be too stressed as well. I don't know we're going to be a little stressed. With stress. such confidence, but we're working hard to try and find a solution for that. We've had time to answer a Okay, so I just have two more quick questions, if I may. Um, on page uh, 234, you talk about software's um, um, explanation line seven, talk about software as a service solutions that there's, I think I'm inferring that we're getting some significant benefit out of moving to SaaS solutions, is that right? Yeah. Um, we are, getting, we are getting benefit by where this line of technology is going. Um, so we are moving to the cloud um, software as the software as the solution. Uh, through the chair. So we are transitioning to software as a service over time. Um, the way that we have structured our budget, we have structured to move uh, to software as a service from be a lot quicker. Than what we actually are um, and so so basically what that's saying is we've got the budget and we're not be moving as fast. Um, that's that's been as a result of of supply to COVID. It's as a result of staffing, all that sort of thing. So we are we are moving, but probably not as fast as what we we have budgeted for. So that's why you're seeing a favourable um, variance here. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And just finally, on the uh, debtors and treasury, the last slide, um, just in the pie chart, what's the Karatani Brown sliver? Um, it's just, it's not an allegiance, I just I don't know what it is. 1877 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's it representing? Oh, I'm going to ask Nadine to explain that. So that, that's representing something quite significant. We need to come back and brief council fully on and propose to do that in round March and do that comprehensively um, other than the workshop setting. Okay, thank you. It's quite involved, so I'll just refer back to the information. Okay. There's no further discussion of the motion or chief executive report. For those in favour? No. Objects? Motion's Thank you. Uh, the last item is the appointment of replacement. Uh, uh, did this get distributed? Yes. 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 So everyone's had that. Um, I read that out. I'm happy to move. Uh, hang on. What do you do? <laughs> Sorry. We just want to put a number four there, don't we, before you move on. I'm happy to move it here. I could also just um, acknowledge um, Sandra Gowdy for her are three years as the director of the company. Um, which is just an acknowledgement. That's fair. Yeah, we've been in it. It's called so uh, let me read that out. I'm for acknowledge and thank Sandra Gowdy for her contributions to an Ikitaki Triple Oak Limited for the last two years or three years? Two. Uh, two. Well, yeah, it's only been two, I think. It's been after. So can I get a mover and a second to receive this, please? Yeah, i happy to move it. Terry, thank you. Um, any further discussion? Yes. Does the Chief Executive want to do it? I'll let the Chief Executive answer that question. Um, yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. Fantastic. Fantastic. Lorna, anything else to contribute? 
Okay, any discussion? If you not, I'll put the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to um, declare the meeting closed. Thank you, everyone. Have I missed anything? No. <laughs>